hawks can detect these vibrations from three kilometers away, but they don't always respond. And as industrial fishing decimates shark numbers, the weights are getting even longer. Finally, a grey reef shark emerges from the blue. Blaze has appeased its spirit. But now he has to catch it, and sharks are notoriously skittish. It's a game of cat and mouse. Blaze tries to entice the shark close enough to slip a noose around its neck. But one false move and it's game over. Finally, it takes the bait. Slowly, he prepares the noose. Blaze can't keep hold of the thrashing shark, but this wooden float prevents it diving. Then, as if under a spell, the shark suddenly stops. But in fact, the float exploits a quirk in shark biology. Exhausting it so much, it enters a state known as tonic immobility. Blaze approaches with caution. The shark is still very much alive, and its bite could cause serious injury. In the past, Blaze would have killed the shark for food. But today, he lets it go free. Blaze is committed to keeping his shark calling culture alive. And this means keeping sharks alive. Number long sack, he walk long go down now. Long one name. Me think thing long all future generation long me bla. Be I no good. The sela kalsa long me bla long kisim sak. And it's not just traditions that are threatened. In some seas around the world, a growing shortage of fish is forcing people deeper and deeper just to land a decent catch. So deep they venture to the very limits of human survival. Welcome to the world of the piling divers, perhaps the most dangerous fishing method of all. Eighty men, many of whom are still teenagers, are preparing to dive to over 40 meters. Breathing air pumped through these makeshift tubes by this rusty compressor. Joseph is one of the youngest aboard, but he's aware of the risks. compressor, because it's 
He's already witnessed just how lethal his job can be. Siya yung kasama ko. Pero no sa ano, sa way ng buhay. Naga namatay ho siya na. Nakompress naman ho siya pero wala na rin, hindi na rin kaya. Nagpaalam na nga ho yun eh. Mamamahinga na daw siya. The seas around the Philippines were once rich with life. But they've been so overexploited that decent fish numbers are only found at perilous depths. The divers guide the huge ball of nets 40 meters down to the sea floor, but all the while their air supply is at risk. Back on the boat, the ailing compressor and the ever-worsening tangle of tubes need constant attention. Like a failing heart pumping through clogged arteries, if this circulation system fails, at this depth, it's almost certain death. Joseph and the team unravel the nets and lay them out by securing them to rocks. They must work fast. Joseph knows the longer he spends at these depths, the more dangerous it becomes. With every breath, more nitrogen dissolves in his body, making him increasingly vulnerable to decompression sickness. The bends. The top of the net is suspended by plastic containers filled with air, creating a huge cavernous trap beneath. Now it's time to set the scare line. The boats drag the thousand meter line to form a huge circle around the net, and the divers position themselves along it. Joseph and the team begin closing the trap by swimming towards the net. The waving streamers and the curtain of rising bubbles panics the fish and they flee. As the line of divers tightens, more and more fish swim straight into the gaping net. This deep sea roundup is so effective, it can take 50% of the fish from a reef. net is closed and now Joseph must do something even more dangerous. Get inside and herd the catch to the far end. Good lang mo nang ganyan, siyempre may screen. Doon ka tatamaan ng ano niyan, hindi ka makakahon baka. Doon ka pa mamatay sa lambat na yun. Kaya todo ingat din na hindi ka makap ano doon sa ilan. On deck, the tangled web of tubes is getting worse. Once the catch is concentrated, the net is released from its anchor points. Now comes the most lethal stage of all, guiding the net as it shoots to the surface. 
All too often, the divers ascend too quickly and get the bends. As the catch is hauled onto the boat, its size is revealed. Just under a ton of fish isn't bad, but it's nowhere near what these fishermen were landing a few years ago. And this isn't the only problem. Some of the crew do have the bends. One diver has returned to the bottom to relieve the symptoms. Whilst closer to the surface, another is massaged to release the painful bubbles in his spine. Every day, these piling divers are taking greater risks for dwindling rewards. Meron din pagkakaiba. Hindi naman habang nabubuhay ka, ito lang ang pinakamatrabaho mo talaga eh. Meron din iba. Hindi lang ganda pang marami. Siyempre, yung hindi rin delikado. Kung accept ka rin sa trabaho mo, hindi ka naano-ano ng sakit sa katawan. Joseph has his dreams. But the harsh reality is, he'll be diving twice again today, just to make ends meet. We've become so successful in the ocean, it's predicted that in 50 years, almost all the fish could be gone. And this may not be the only change to come. All around the world, sea levels are rising. Soon, our planet could be even more dominated by the ocean, and our ability to survive here will be pushed to the very limit. Yet there are some people who've already adapted to life in a water world. In the coral seas between Borneo, Sulawesi and the Philippines, there are people who live more